UK Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Today we'll again uh, uh, start from locators. Uh, in our last class, we had a just a kind of introduction. Okay, here uh, in Selenium there is a concept called locators. Okay, so to understand this concept, first let us take a one uh, one test case here. Okay, so this is a, a normal uh, login test case. Okay. Uh, now you know these these are the steps. Like in a generally a test case will contain steps and expected values, expected action right. So these are the steps in a test case. Like enter username, enter password, click on sign in. Okay. So these are the uh, steps for uh, for a login. Okay. Now. First, we will try to understand how we can perform a testing manually. Okay. First, we will try. First, to, first, we will try to understand how we can perform a testing a manual testing. Okay. Say we have this test cases. Say we have this login test case. How generally we perform a manual testing is? Yes. Okay. If again, I am saying, please everyone follow this protocol. The questions that you are going to ask during this session will be ignored. So here we were discussing about uh, uh, one image. However, let me uh, let me try it for one more time. Okay, here uh, let me say this is a username, this is a username, okay, and similarly let's say here uh, password, okay, here uh, so we have uh, sign in. So this is the say for example this is the application that we are testing. Okay, username, password, sign in. Say this is a Facebook login. We are testing it. Say we are testing using a manual. Say I am talking about a manual testing. So here, uh, so we were talking about a manual testing. So here in a manual testing, generally person will be there, right? The human being will be there. Okay. The human being will be there and uh, Basically, a human being refers a particular test case. What are the test cases that we have? Let me complete this. Okay. So, a human being refers a test case. Uh, one minute. G 
few minutes. Thank you. So basically, this human being uh, refers the uh, manual test case. Okay, uh, refers this manual test case. This is a, a test case. What are the test cases that we are talking about? Okay. And if you remember, I said. Human being refers this particular test case. Okay, uses his eyes. Okay, yeah. So a human being uses his eyes and refers this particular test case and performs this testing. Okay, this is how a uh, manual testing will happen, right? Now, a human being refers the test case. So, you have refers the test case means he is going to refer the steps. Okay, enter username. So, as the step is saying enter username, human being will search for a username field here by using by using the eyes. Okay, I'm just using a general terminology, but uh, I'm I'm trying to make you understand here. Okay. Human being uses his eyes, or his or her eyes, to uh, to search for this username. Okay, and in a similar way, to search for this password. This is how a a manual testing will be written, right? Okay, this is how a, a manual testing is going to be uh, is going to be happen. Okay, so I'm saying this is a manual testing. So here the key is uh, the here the key element is our eyes. Okay, our eyes are these sensors which which basically sense the username, password, and sign in. Okay, that is where a user uh, a manual testing is being happen, right? So if we if if we uh, don't make use of this eyes, how can we search for the username? How how can we search for the password? How can we, how can we execute these steps? How can we enter a username? How can we enter the password? Okay, here uh, eyes are playing the major role here. Okay, now if you want to automate the same test case, okay, now see here. Uh, let me save it as a uh, manual testing. Okay, now if we talk about the uh, automation here, okay, now let's see. I want to automate the same test case. Okay, now see here. Now say this is automation testing. Okay, if I want to automate this particular test case, okay. Now basically here generally, as we said in the earlier, in earlier classes, we will have automation tools. Okay, say so this is going to have an automation tool. Now this automation tool basically should need. Okay. It may be any automation tool. It might be a Selenium. It might be a, a QTP. Here we are basically trying to understand the concept. Okay. So we are doing automation testing. We are using an automation tool. By using this automation tool, we are, we are planning to automate it. Okay. Now our automation tool should able to recognize these things. Okay. So generally we will have automation tool. Here we will have something called uh, uh, automation script. Okay, again, this automation script can be anything. It might be uh, you know, built on uh, using uh, based on the based on the tool. This automation script will be uh, prepared. Okay, 
So now this basically this is going to be ready for this. Okay. Basically automation tool uses this uh, particular automation script and then it will identify this username. How it is identifies? If you remember, I said a human being is, uh, is going to use his eyes to recognize this username password. But again, this automation tool should able to recognize this username and password. Okay, that is where there should be a, uh, there should be a concept called object identification. Okay. What I am saying here, here human being uses eyes to test the application. This was the key. Okay. Now here, in terms of automation testing, basically automation tool, it might be any tool, okay, should have the eyes. Okay, here I am saying in general, okay, in the generic terminology I am using the eyes, okay, in technical words, okay, here I will say eyes which are nothing but technically we call it as a object in general uh, let me say sensors which again in turn I can say it's uh, like an object identification okay now here a automation tool uh, generally will have an object identification mechanism okay it will have an object identification mechanism each tool has its own its own object identification mechanism. Why? Why we need this to to recognize to be able to see this username password these kind of objects. Okay, then only we can perform the testing, right? So here each tool has its own uh, object identification mechanism. Here in Selenium. we have locators concept okay here we call it as a locators okay we have to discuss more details of this okay in selenium we call it as a locators now basically this automation tool refers this automation scripts then in 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 overall it will try to identify okay then in overall it will identify this uh, application okay now here in this automation script, there is a key thing is called as a reference. Okay. This automation script will have a reference here. Will contain the okay. It will have some reference. This reference is nothing but this is going to talk about this username. It is going to have a, a reference of username. It is going to have a reference of password. It is going to have a reference of signing. Okay. Basically, based on, you, uh, based on that reference, QTP tool can, uh, sorry, this automation tool can identify this particular application. Okay. In automation testing, in simple words, automation tool should, should, tool should have an object identification mechanism. Okay. Automation tool will have an object identification mechanism which uses basically this mechanism. This mechanism uses this reference. Okay. This reference, it uses this reference to identify this username, to identify this password and to identify this sign in. In simple words, I am saying if this automation script will be built based on the reference of this username, it will have some reference of this username. It will have some reference of password. It will have some uh, it will have some reference of signing. So this automation tool uses this references. It uses this references to recognize the, this username, to recognize this password, to recognize this signing. Okay, I hope everyone is following this. Okay. Yeah. So this automation tool uses this references reference of this username to recognize the username. 
Okay, this automation tool uses the reference of password to recognize the password. Okay, so here basically automation script built based on the references here, reference of username, reference of the password, reference of the sign-in, so that this automation tool can make use of these references to recognize. Okay, now in detail, let me say. Automation script built on reference of each object. Exam here, say uh, script automation, let me say automation script is okay. Built in automation script, say username related logic username uh, say if you want to enter username okay automation script uses reference of username okay automation script uses the reference of username in the script okay I already said automation scripts uses the reference of username okay and here similarly it uses the reference of the password it uses the reference of sign in okay building means here i said automation script build uh, here i am saying automation script built on the reference of each object right so here it, in detail Automation scripts use the reference of username, reference of the password, reference of the sign-in. So that, so that automation tool can uh, recognize the object using the reference of the object. Okay. So, so that automation tool can uh, recognize the username in the application using the reference of the object in the script. Okay. So here, uh, automation tool can recognize this particular uh, this particular username. Automation tool can recognize this particular username based on the this username reference that is mentioned in the script. Okay. That all these things happen with the user, uh, automation tool. So instead of having eyes, it has some concept called object identification mechanism. In this mechanism, uh, it uses the reference that we have mentioned in the script to recognize this username, to recognize this password, to recognize this signing. Okay, this this is nothing but here in Selenium we call it as a locators. Okay, now here I am talking about references, right? Here basically these references, uh, you know, these these are the references which will be derived from the application. Okay the references the reference the in the script will be derived from the application now actually we are going to discuss about this okay so this technically we call it as a locators okay technically this references will be called as locators and how These references will be called as locators, and how this locators will be derived from the application okay now we are basically going to understand how these uh, How these locators will be derived from the, an application? Now we are going to discuss now. Okay, this is actually our topic is about this. Okay, just to give an idea, I I took an, I took care of some example and I was being slowly explaining this. Okay, so here tool have an object identification mechanism. It uses references to recognize the objects in simple words. Okay. okay. Now here. Uh, we understood that the references are the barcodes of the 
application will be maintained in the script. Okay, and we understood that these references will be derived from the application. Okay, technically that is where I am saying here. Here locators. Okay, these references will be called as locators, and how these locators will be derived from the application. Now we will try to understand this topic. Now for for understanding this, okay, we have to understand the a structure of a uh, web application. Okay. Why we are only talking about the web application? Because Selenium supports web applications only. Okay. And the reasons and the statistics as as all of those information is being discussed during the demo and during the first classes. Okay. You can refer. However, coming back to the web application, uh, if you consider any web application, okay, if you take any web application, it might be Facebook, it might be Google. It might be Gmail. It might be any application. Any web application is going to build on some set of objects. Any web application going to build on some set of objects. Okay. Now, if you consider this particular uh, Facebook login page, this Facebook is a this Facebook login page is a web application, right? Now, this page is going to be built using this username. Here, username technically is called as a label, okay? And this is a text box. Password is again a label. This is a text box, and sign in is a button, right? Here, this particular Facebook login page has been built based on these objects: username, password, the labels. And this uh, username text box, password text box, and sign in button. Okay, here this particular Facebook login page is being built on five five different objects. Like this, if you consider any web application, if you take any web application under that any web application, if you take if you take any web page, it is going to be built using the text boxes, using the text boxes, using the list box. List box means drop down. using the links using the buttons check boxes what else can you guess what are the different objects that we can come across in a web application in other words what are the different controls different objects that you will come across in a web application is the text means it will be called as labels what else tables images like right. a web application any web application is going to be built on these uh, different sets of objects right is yes. prompts means alerts and uh, frames okay yep okay. we will consider pop up as alerts what else Okay, well, any web application is going to build maximum of these objects, right? The maximum, maximum, uh, no, any web application is going to build on these set of objects, right? Text box, list box, link, button, check box, radio button, labels. Uh, I'm not forgetting anything here. That's it. Okay, any web application, you take any web application across the world, those ob, uh, those applications will be built on these objects, right? Now here. If you remember, I said here in the automation script we will use the references, okay? Which is nothing but say, in other words, in other words, basically we are automating a test case here. Okay, say we are automating this test case, and how this test case is going to be? This test case is going to be built on the objects that we have used in the application, right? Now we understood that. In a web application, these are the different sets of objects, and our test case. Say, if we talk about our test case, which will be built. In other words, which will which will be built on the above objects. Above objects are fields. Okay. Say, if you consider hundred test cases, say you are automating a Facebook. Okay. 
say you wrote 100 manual test cases, you have 100 test cases. Just now we understood that any web application is going to build on these set of objects. It means, in other words, these 100 test cases is going to be built based on these objects. Right? Do you agree with me? Are you able to follow over here? Do you agree with me? These 100 test cases are going to be built based on these objects. Right? Technically, in other words, in indirectly, these 100 test cases are going to be used, these set of objects. The 100 test cases is going to be right based on the set of objects, these set of objects. Like one of the, one of the test cases, if you take, take login, I'm saying username, enter username. And here, username is a text box. So this particular, this particular step has been built based on the text box. Okay. And I'm saying enter password. And this particular field, this particular text box is, uh, password is nothing but again text, text box, right? Now I'm saying click on sign in. So if you take this particular sample test case, click on sign in. It is a button. Button might be our link. It depends on the developer. Okay. So we understood that any web application is going to build on these objects. And indirectly, whatever the test cases that we have, all those test cases are being built on these objects. Okay. Now we took one of the example login. So this is these are the steps. Technically, with respect to uh, whatever we have discussed, it is nothing but text box, text box, button. Okay. Right. So all these test cases has been built on these objects. Now if we know how can we handle all these objects using the automation tool that set up. Okay. Now here, in general, we are saying uh, these are the general terminology. Okay. In general, we are calling these are the different objects like text box, list box, links. Okay. Now the same thing basically uh, will be represented using HTML. Why I am representing HTML? Because it might be any web application. Generally, uh, web application is being built on HTML language, HTML uh, scripting. We call it as HTML scripting. Okay. Any web application will be built on HTML. Okay. Now, we know in general we use this terminology, right? In terms of technically, it is it will be called as HTML terminology and whenever there is a web application whenever there is a web application okay developer basically develops in a HTML uh, HTML logic okay now we are slowly getting into uh, a kind of a technical related stuff here okay now I'm saying any web application is going to be built on the this uh, set of objects okay and which is again, in other words, any web application is, will be built on HTML. Okay, so this text box uh, will be called technically in a different. Uh, it will have some uh, different terminology technically. Okay, now see here, this text box basically will be called as a input. Okay, it will be represented by like this input. Okay, input, and uh, there is a something called type equal to text. Now list box will be generally will be represented using some select. Okay. And links will be represented using A. Button will be represented again using input, but type will be equal to button. Okay. Checkbox again it will be represented using input and uh, type equal to checkbox. Okay. Radio button will, will also be the same. It will be called as input, but the type equal to radio. Okay. Labels, yes. It depends. Uh, sometimes uh, no, there is something called span. Some set of people use span. Some set of people use uh, div. Okay. And tables, it will be represented using table. Images, it will be represented using image, img. And frames, yes, there will be directly frames and alerts. Uh, I think it will be represented reality. 
okay now here uh, any web application will be uh, technically we uh, we call it as a html based applications and uh, this is a, we know this is a general terminology the analogy or uh, the in terms of html terminology it will be represented like this or we can call these are these are the things are called as html tags okay these things will be called as html tags technically we call them as html tags these are the html tags if you take any web application if you take any web application and if you go to the technical details okay it will have a text box is going to be represented like this okay a list box or a drop down is going to be represented like this a link is going to be represented like this okay now based on these html terminology based on these things basically uh, we will derive our locators okay why i have been explaining all these things you know i'm saying uh, a web application is going to be built on these objects and test cases indirectly is going to be built on these objects and uh, we understood generally then we going to the uh, html terminology why because basically i was talking about a uh, section here right i said locators will be derived from the application okay application is built on this html in other words html application is going to be built, built, built on the html tags so our locators the locators is nothing but references references will be derived from this technical part okay you yeah. tell us point any questions okay great now here uh, we'll continue here so i'm saying uh, html terminology so we use this html terminology to derive the locators okay now again we'll try to understand in general what is this html terminology okay let me understand let let me explain this html tag if you take any web application if you take any object in the web application okay let me say if you take any web application and in that web application if you take any object okay will have a html tag will have a html tag okay and we'll try to understand the syntax of html tag if you can understand this syntax of html tag that is enough we don't need to basically basically you don't need to know about the html basics also okay here we don't require html basics also only thing is you have to understand this uh, syntax okay if you are able to understand the syntax of html tag that is enough now see here generally html tag means it is started with uh, less than symbol it will start with less than symbol and here uh, uh, there will be something called tag there will be uh, something called tag okay we call it as a html tag let me represent this flower braces flower braces means like it's like a generic technically we call it as a html tag and here uh, we have uh, attributes we have attributes for example say if you are able to just try to understand this example say i am talking about uh, uh, say for example i am talking about a car okay can everyone see my screen can you see my screen Here, uh, now see. Let me explain. Uh, let us say. Let us uh, talking about a car. Okay. Now see here. Sir, the tag of the car is car. Okay. Here, let me say. Type. Say it's uh, SUV. Color. Say uh, red color. Okay. Say length. Equal to some say two, three, four, for some okay. Some uh, some others like some other other things. Now here, if you closely observe this, here what is the HTML tag? When you compare this syntax, okay. If you compare with this syntax and with this example, what is the HTML HTML tag here? Okay, here HTML tag is the car. Okay, 
this is the syntax for overall html tag and however whatever you have after the less than symbol that will be called as a whatever you have after the less than symbol will be called as a html tag okay in this example html tag is the car and attributes i was mentioning attributes right and here attributes basically attributes means it will have some property it will have property technically we call it as property name property value okay now here property name is type is the one of the property okay color is the one of the property h2k emphasis provides world class online it training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide h2k emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.